God's house this morning. I'm a little under weather this morning. Don't know exactly what's going on. I'm so tired of wishing the Lord will. We're going to try to preach. If it ain't, I'll get out of the way and show it if I can stand for it. So, like I said, it's good to see everyone. Thank God for you. Thank God you come out our way. Thank our brother for coming and saying, God, we've got such a beautiful job saying that. I went to the Gideons, uh, thank you, had down to the grill, he sang there, and touched my soul there, and touched my soul every time I heard him sing. So, there's a difference when someone sings for the right reason. There's a difference when someone sings with the Spirit of God, I and mean, you can tell that's where it comes from. And I truly feel that that's where it comes from, my brothers. So, uh, you're a blessing for me. So, if you would this morning, turn with me to Acts chapter 12. If the Lord will, I'll try to preach. Y'all pray for me. Chapter 12, we're going to start the very first verse of chapter 12 of Acts. Step on the board, also, as we stand for the reading of God's Word. It says, uh, Now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to make certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in a prison and delivered him to four coffins of soldiers to keep him, and tend him after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. Of the church and to God for him. And when her would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, and he raised him up, saying, Arise, and up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow thee. And he went out and he followed him, and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But Paul did saw vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that lead us into the city, which opened to him of, the, of his accord, of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel had delivered me out of the hand of her, and from the ex, uh, expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the king. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to heart and named Brother. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is, it is an angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when he had opened the door, when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Praise God, you may be seated. Now, I know that's a lot of reading. I know I'm dragging a little bit. Right so, are with me. They said here, to talk about her and what he had done. He had Stretch forth his hand, in verse 1, it says, The vexed servant of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now, at that time, the church was under great persecution, just like it is today. It was under great persecution, and the people that was a member of the church, they also was under persecution. So here, he had reached forth his hand, it said, that he killed James, the brother of John with a sword, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. 
It says that this was the days of unleavened bread. It says in verse number four, this is kind of where we're going to start to be the Lord's will. It says that when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four partners of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now I want you to know when he kept when he got Peter, he had no intent for Peter to ever go free again. He had no intent for him to get out of that prison alive. He had no intent for Peter to ever walk the street again. He had an all intent in his heart, praise God, this morning, to lock him up inside of a prison. And at the right time, he was going to bring him forth and he was going to kill him in front of the Jews to please the world, to please the Jews. I want you to know something this morning. I can't read this passage and not think about how Satan wants to tie you down. I can't read it and not think about how Satan would like nothing better to deliver you up into the center of a prison and put forth watchers of soldiers watching over you. How he'd like to wrap you in the chains of sin and set you in the middle of a prison with a guard on each side of you and make it so, praise God, that you never see light again. I can't help but to think that Satan would love to put his foot on you and to hold you right down no matter what you're trying to do for God. And the more you step forth for God, the harder it comes. And the more Satan wants you down. I want to tell you something this morning. He never had no intentions of letting Peter go. It says he had four quadrants of soldiers. Now, a quadrant of soldiers was four soldiers. It never quadrants. So it was 16 soldiers that was keeping Peter in that prison. 16 of them. It says in verse number 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church and to God for him. This goes right back to your Sunday school lesson this morning. He goes right back to me being an anointed with oil while I go. Prayer changes things. When people of God reaches out to God, God changes things. Prayer changes things. we got to have faith that it's going to work. But if we have the faith and we pray out to God fervently, God will answer. Now, it may not be exactly the way we thought it would be answered, but God will answer. So the people of the church, they prayed unto God for him and said in verse 5, and verse 6, and and when Herod would have brought, brought him forth the same night. Now I want you to know something. God didn't say to him, I don't know how long you've been in there. I don't know how long. It, it didn't say in that text how long Peter had been in that prison. But God might not have saved him the first day. He may not come and got him out the second day. He may have been in there two weeks for all I know. I don't know how long he was kept. But I can tell you this. The night that he was supposed to be taken down by her, God had a different plan. God had a different plan for him. Just like each and every one of you sitting here this morning. Now, I don't know how your souls are this morning. I don't know if you're right, ready to go home or not. But let me tell you something. If you're not ready to go, you're the same as Peter. You're wrapped up in the sins of this world as chains. And they're bound about you and you put into a prison, in the center of a prison, with quadrants of the soldiers watching over you. But I want you to know something. Just as with Peter, God has a plan. God doesn't want anyone to purge. God has a plan for you in your life. Now if you're sitting here and you're saved, it goes for you too. If we got saved and we walk this road and and we found ourselves in places we shouldn't be. And it happens. It happens. It happens to the best of us. You'll be in the middle of something that you shouldn't have been in before you know what happened. And every time you do it, there's another chain added. There's another soldier waiting at the door. There's another King Hurt to throw you in the center of the prison. Satan wants nothing more than to watch, his, watch God's children be destroyed. 
to wrap them up in chains and to throw them into the center of a prison where no one can see and no one can hear. But I got this for you. God's got a plan. God's got a reason that he does everything. And he said, in that sixth verse, and it says, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. They was assured that Peter wasn't going anywhere. They had a soldier on each side of him. They had two chains wrapped about him. And he was sitting in the middle of a floor, no doubt. King Herod knew that he had him right where he wanted him. Satan's the same way with you and me. He's been <laughs> good to in him. He puts you in the middle of a prison and he holds you right there. He holds you bound by your sins, bound by the chains that you allowed him to put on you. And he keeps you right there, assured that you're not going to make it out of that prison. Assured that you'll be right there when he's ready to come and get you. But God ain't playing. God had a plan. It says, and Peter was sleeping between the two soldiers, bound by two chains, and the keepers before the door, so no one was not doing their job. These soldiers was on task. No one was not doing their job. That wasn't why he got loose. And it says, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined into the prison. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I remember the day that that light shined into the prison that I was in. Do you remember that day, brother? I remember that day when the light shined into the prison that I was in. That Satan had me bound in every sin that you could possibly imagine. And I couldn't move. And I couldn't leave because Satan had me bound. I remember when God shined that light into that prison that day. You guys remember that? That was a good day, wasn't it? That was a good day. If you can't answer me and say you remember that day, you need, to, you need to make a brand new day. That day needs to happen. Because if it happens to you, you won't forget that day. And that light shined into that prison, the Bible says. And the angel of the Lord, he spoke Peter up the side and he raised him up. Can't you see? As, as he stood beside Peter, who knows what kind of shape he was in, chained between the guards. And the angel of the Lord reached down and he picked him up. And he spoke, and he picked up to his feet, and he said, Arise up quickly. And as Peter woke out, shook off the sleep, shook off the grogginess, the chains fell off of him. I remember the day that I was set free of those chains. I got news for you this morning. I think sometimes Christians don't remember that day enough. There was a day that my God set me free of the chains of the Satan's sin and the things that bound me down. <coughs> and kept me in a prison. There was a day that God set me free. I never will forget that day. I never want to. He told him to rise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind thy sandals. Get ready to go, sir. You've got a journey ahead of you. Same thing God will teach every one of us to do. To get up, to gird yourself up, to put your sandals on and get ready to go because you've got a journey that lies before you. You've not made it to heaven yet, folks. We've not made it there yet. If you're lost in here and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you got maybe a little farther to go than the rest of us. But we all have a journey. We all have a trip to go. If you're still breathing and you're setting up right this morning, you've not made it where you need to go yet. He said, rise up, gird up yourself, and let's go. My, my, my. And, and so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow thee. Jesus is just telling you about this this morning. To cast your garment about you and follow him. 
seemed like the easiest thing in the world, don't it? You know, it seemed easy to go follow Jesus. It's easy to find Jesus or let Jesus find you. It's easy to be saved. Sometimes it's hard to follow. <coughs> sometimes it's hard to follow. We want to lead ourselves sometimes. We want to get in the way of what God would have us to do, wherever he is to. He said, and follow me. And he went out following him. And wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he had saw a vision. He didn't even think what was going on to him was true. He thought that he was in the middle of a vision. <clears throat> he thought that day. That he was just seeing things. And in his mind, he had already stayed in there long enough, no doubt, that he was visioning being able to get out of there. So he didn't even think it was real. It says, when they were past the first and the second floor, they came to an iron gate that led them to the city, which opened to them of his own court. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Now I want you to know something. This angel of the Lord was sent to free Peter. He was sent to free him from the chains that he was shackled with. He was sent to, to free him from being hurt. He was sent to free him from the guards that was around him. No matter how many gates they had to go through. No matter how many uh, stations, guard stations they had to walk by. No matter what stood in front of them. Honey, the angel was going to deliver them just where God told them to be delivered. I want you to know something this morning. If you're safe in here and you hang on to that mighty hand of God, I want you to know that he's going to deliver you right where he wants you to be. Amen. He ain't nothing going to stand in his way this morning. I want you to know, honey, there ain't a mountain big enough, praise God. There ain't a boulder strong enough to hold him back. There ain't nothing in this world, praise God, that's going to hold my Lord back. If I want to go home and I stay in that big hand of his, honey, there ain't nothing going to keep me from seeing the gold streets of him. Amen. Amen. He had something to do. He had someone, praise God, that God had sent him to deliver. And the angel intended on doing his job. And the angel, he did just intend that he done his job. He led him out to the gate, and the gate opened of its own accord. There'll come a day when you'll be led to a gate. There'll come a day, honey, when you'll be led to a gate. And there'll be a, a, a judge. And there'll be a, a Savior standing there, and his name will be Jesus. You'll be led to that great praise God, and he'll look at you, and he'll tell you whether you'll either come in or you'll depart from him. You're going to be led to a gate one day. But this gate opens up, just like Peter. Just like Peter, when, I, when he realized that that gate had opened and let him through, he knew he was set free at that time. He knew he was free. I want you to know something this morning. Satan will try every way in the world to bind you. He'll try every way in the world to hold something over you, to wrap you up in some kind of sin. He'll try everything he can to hold you back. But there'll come a day if you'll just keep hanging on to God's big hand. There'll come a day, praise God, that every pain will fall away. And then, praise God, you'll finally walk through that gate, and every pain will be there. And you'll be free from every pain that's been bothering you down here on this earth. I don't know about you. I thank God for God. God's anointing power. I thank God for the touch that He gave me this morning. I don't feel exactly like I should feel, but I praise God that I'm doing much better than I was an hour ago, an hour and a half ago. I'm doing much better this morning because God touched me. It wasn't a doctor. There's nothing wrong with doctors. It wasn't a doctor. It wasn't a nurse. It wasn't anything, praise God, other than God this morning that touched me. And I thank God for that. I thank God that he decided that he would help me this morning. Amen. But praise be to God, he looked down and he seen the shape that Peter was in. And he knew that he had a plan for Peter. Peter wasn't done. Peter wasn't done. It wasn't no way that God was going to allow him to stay in the center of that tree. He looks down on each and every one of you this morning. And I can tell you this morning, you ain't done yet. You ain't done yet. So whatever the you. Whatever, praise God, gets in your way, 
of serving God. Get it out. Get it out of your way. Get it out of your life. Get rid of it. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior this morning, today's the day. Today's the day, brother. There was a day when I met him. There's a day for you to meet him. Today's a good day. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Just like our brother Shane and I were all here. He died on an old cross on Calvary for me and for you. He bled all of his life's blood to pay a sin debt that he didn't know for me and for you. Don't walk shackled by your sins. Don't walk shackled by Satan. Come to the master and let him set you free. Come to Jesus this morning and let him let the chains fall off around you. Let him walk you past the guards that's trying to hold you back. Let him, praise God, lead you onto the street. Let him lead you home one day. I don't know about you. I don't know about any of you in here. But I can tell you this morning, we'll never find that street. It's not through. It's not through by the blood of Jesus Christ. You'll never walk on that street go. Never. That's a promise. That's not just a promise for me. That's a Bible. Well, that makes it real. That makes it right. This morning, God has a plan for each and every one of you. I don't know what your plan is. I'm just figuring out my plan every day. But God has a plan for you. And he doesn't, he doesn't intend for you to be kept in the center of a prison. He doesn't intend for you, for you to be wrapped up in chains of sin and to have, not be able to move and have to worry and have to wonder and have to think all the time. I wonder if something was to happen to me, would I make it wrong? He doesn't intend for his children to live that way. He's got a plan. And he's come and set you free. Now, I kind of touched on the Holy Ghost, but I don't know how long Peter has been there. I don't know how long that you may have been in this condition. I don't know. I don't know. As Christians, we're not we're not exempt from sin. See, that's where free will comes in. We're not exempt from sin. You can still sin when you're a Christian. But I want you to know something. Every time you do it, leave a mark. Every time you do it, leaves a, a chain. Every time you do, there's something left behind. And every time you do, Satan's got a little bit more to hold on to before you have. This morning, remember, God didn't intend for that today. The Bible says, no, he set free is free indeed. Let me tell you something this morning. God don't intend for you to be going back by your sin. God don't intend for us to praise God. To go to bed at night and worry if we're we'll making it to heaven if we don't open our eyes the next morning. God don't intend for his people to be that way. If you're that way this morning, you need to fix it. You need to fix it. If you're a Christian in here, so why do you not feel that way sometimes? You need to fix it. If you got something in your life that's holding you back, you need to fix it. Jesus didn't let anything hold him back. This angel that that sin, they sent in for Peter didn't let anything hold him back. The chains fell off, the doors opened, the guards, he walked right by them, nothing held him back. And if they had been walls of, of iron or steel or, or concrete or whatever, it wouldn't have held him back. Don't let anything hold you back this morning from serving the Lord. It's the best life you'll ever find. It's the best hope that we ever had. We don't have another hope with the name for Jesus. If you want to see heaven one day, that's your hope. I can only imagine when Peter got out and he, he shook the cobwebs out of his head, he finally figured out that it was real. He finally figured out that he was standing on the street instead of being chained between two guards in a prison. There's going to come a day if you'll hang on to Christ. You'll get to a place and you'll shake off the cobwebs of this old world and you'll finally figure out that you're where you need to be. You're no longer in that prison. You're no longer chained by the things of this old world. You're set free. Now, I don't know about you all. Feel good or feel bad or whatever. That makes me happy this morning to know that I got a day to that I shake all this stuff off. And it's all gone. And from then on, 
I realize that I've been set free, free and been that I'm in heaven. That's my goal in this life. Is it your goal this morning? If it ain't your goal, you need to make new goals. If that ain't top on your list, you need to erase everything else and start over with your list. That has to be the very first thing on your list. I love you this morning. I thank God for every one of you that came out this morning. I thank God for his touch this morning. I thank God most of all for salvation. I thank God for mercy. Because without mercy, we all in big trouble. Without grace, we all in big trouble. I thank God for mercy and grace. And I thank God for taking a prize. He didn't know for rich like that. I love the Lord this morning. He's been awful good to me. I fail him. He might on never hand. But he's been awful good to me. How are you this morning with Christ? Where are you standing? I'm going to have a song or I play the piano or something. Get ready to dismiss the Lord's will. As we stand. 43, I see the Lord. Let me ask you this morning. Are you where you need to be this morning? Now, I'm not always talking to the lost, I'm talking to Christians. Are you where you need to be? Father, keep you. You want to be kept. Church rules. It's free will. You have to decide you want to be kept. So if you have something on your mind and on your heart this morning, you need to get rid of it. Well, it's a good morning to do it. Get rid of it. Don't let stuff hold you back. Don't let this world hinder you. This world's going to hurt you. The elements of this world is going to help and heat the Bible says. This world's not going to stand forever. Just like me and you. We're not going to stand forever. There'll be a day that we'll stand before Christ and we'll answer. For every man that we've done and not done good. The Bible says, every out of work. I don't want out of work tonight. It's okay.
He's always way above us, and he's always good. He's always perfect. Gosh. Makes me glad to know that he's watching out for me. He's watching out for you this morning. And we love you. You don't want me to perish. Please. You don't know Christ. Get ready to pray and go home. But if, if you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, please, please, please let me beg you. Find a place. You don't have to be saved in the church. Find a place and still wait. Get on your knees and ask God to forgive you. Ask Him to come into your life and be your Lord and your King. We have to have Jesus in the home. If you're Christians, you know, we we sometimes we, we step in the mud along the way. Sometimes we need to stop and make sure the mud comes off our feet. Get on our knees and need to pray. Or remove whatever hindrance. Sometimes that's scary. But we need to do it. So this morning, I love you and I thank God each and every way. Just go knowing that Christ loves you. And you don't intend for your children to be chained in bondage. So that being said, what do we? If you want to dismiss us a word of prayer, uh, during the public praise. What did they decide about the Christmas decorating night at church? Or? Yes, we're going to put up the tree and then we'll decorate it night at church here if anybody wants to stay. Okay. Not this evening, just direct back. Well, to we're going to come back this evening because we can't get it all done right now, but uh, for all who wants to stay right now, that's fine. So we're going to work on it now and later. It, okay. If you want to come back now, you don't have to, but sure. uh, the tree's the big thing. Yeah, we're, we're going to do the bulk of it right now. Okay. And then, then one more thing before everybody gets away.